Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 80028, The Bone Demon from the LEGO Monkey Kid theme. This set contains 1,373 pieces, 5 minifigures, and will retail for $119.99 in the US. This is an all-new set releasing on July 1st, 2021, which was sent to me early by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I was sent all three of the upcoming LEGO Monkey Kid sets, and while this is the first one I'm reviewing, I'll be reviewing the other two over the next two days, so let me know in the comments which of the sets you want to see reviewed next. But yeah, with all that being said, let's get on to the review. So I'm just going to come right out and say it, this is one of my favorite sets of this year. I absolutely love this set, I'm blown away by how much I like it, but... This set is incredible in so many different ways. It's a great display piece, it's a fun building experience. I think it's a great set for kids to play with. The minifigure selection here is incredible. The value is incredible, which is impressive for LEGO Monkey Kid because I've been very critical of LEGO Monkey Kid's prices in the past, but the price here is actually really, really good for like what you get in the set. There's lots of unique and exclusive parts and unique and exclusive minifigures. I cannot believe how much is in this set. Like you can see in the video that you're watching right now, like there's so much here and you can transform it all. It's just so much fun. So let me take you through each individual little aspect because yeah there's just so much here so first i want to take you through each of the parts of the bone mech because if you couldn't tell the bone mech is actually made of six individual builds that all stand on their own they're not just like little mech parts like they're all their own thing the biggest and most substantial of them is this one right here this is a bone scorpion and this guy is super, super cool looking. I much prefer the mech form to all the little individual forms, but these individual forms are still really cool, and I absolutely love that transformation. I'll show you the transformation after we get through all of them, but let's take a look at each of them individually first. But yeah, here's the Scorpion, who also serves as the base for the mech, and you can see he has two long arms coming out right here. You have this big tail that curls up in the back with like these little spikes coming out the front. You have the sticker piece of some eyes right here, some more like little pincers that's like a mouth. And then he has a total of six legs in the back, three on each side. These arms have quite a bit of posability. You can see you can rotate them completely up. It uses like these rigid technic joints, which I love. These are probably my favorite joints that LEGO does. I much prefer them to ball joints because it allows you to like keep the build in like different positions. Like ball joints, this probably would not be able to stay up like that. But the rigid technic joints allow for that. You can also see there's an elbow joint right here, which can also be moved. And the wrists can be rotated as well. So there's quite a few different options for like getting these arms in different positions. These legs at the back, the back four do not move like these just stay completely static but these front ones can actually move so you can move forward to bed you can also move up and down rotate them upside down if you want and then the little like stinger or spike at the top can also rotate so here's a look at the hands themselves up close. You can see it uses these larger bone pieces right here for fingers. You get to hold two of them. And then it uses a smaller like tooth piece down here for a smaller finger down here. So you have a total of three fingers. And these could each be articulated so you can just move them in. So you can, if you want the hand closed, you can have it like that. Or you can have it completely open. You can see in the middle there's a little Technic pin which isn't used on the Scorpion form. But these arms are also used on the Mech form. So I'll show you what that does when we uh, combine it into the Mech. And there's also like these ghostly trans blue chains coming out which looks so cool. There's like little touches of trans blue all throughout the build. Like a white and purple and red are the main aesthetic. But the little touches of trans blue look so cool and just give like such an ominous look to this build. I absolutely love it. So yeah, you get one chain right here. And then the other hand is identical, just mirrored. And you can see there's another chain hanging off of that. Here's a look at the forearm. You can see on one side there's a bone. There's two uh, tooth spikes on top of it. And then on the other side, there's two Nexo Knights purple shield pieces for just detail, and there's just some black flat pieces just to round it off at the bottom. The upper arm uses these slope pieces to create like the skeletal look, and then it also uses Nexo Knight shields for detail, and then you can see there's a little bit of trans blue on this rounded tile on the bottom of the uh, upper arm. And obviously the other side has all the same things, just mirrored. There's a look at that face up close, that's a sticker piece, as I mentioned, these little pincers at the front can move ever so slightly, you can move them in or you can move them out, there's not a ton of articulation there, but just get, allows you to give this guy a little bit of expression. You also have a sticker design right here on the slope piece and then on this next to night shield piece. Here's a look at those legs up close, and here's where the body of the scorpion transitions into the tail. Lots of anti-studs here, I think this could be done a little bit better, but the other side looks much better, and that's because the other side is what you see when it's in this mech form, and personally I prefer the mech form, so it doesn't bother me too much, I do think it could be customized to look a little bit nicer with less anti studs but i don't think it's that bad you can see there's a little bit more trans blue here just for like an additional detail and speaking of the other side here's what it looks like you can see there's more of a skeletal design to create sort of like a rib cage this entire part of the tail is static but this very top part right here is what moves you also may notice that this rib cage seems slightly off color right this doesn't match the white of like this piece right here and this piece right here that's because these are all glow in the dark pieces so if i shut the lights off in my light box you can see all those parts glow and you can see on the front there's also a few more glow-in-the-dark pieces. 
There's actually glow-in-the-dark pieces all over, like, multiple parts of this set, and I'll show them whenever they pop up, but I believe this set now holds the record for the most glow-in-the-dark pieces in one set, which is really, really cool, because, yeah, I mean, glow-in-the-dark has always been a gimmick LEGO's had, but they don't, like, lean into it too much, so it's so cool to see so much of it used here, and it's used really, really well. I absolutely love it. But yeah, I think that's about all I have to say for the Scorpion for now, so now let's move on to the next part of the Bone Mech. Here's the next part of the Bone Demon mech, and unfortunately I feel like this is the only part that really doesn't stand on its own. Like, the Scorpion doesn't look like it's part of a mech, it looks like a Scorpion, but this, I can't really see it as anything other than a mech's torso, like, this, that's the only thing this really could be to me, I'm not sure what it is, like, outside of that. So yeah, this becomes the torso of the mech, but this is how it looks, like, not connected to all the other parts. My favorite part of this by far is these huge foil, like, flag pieces on the sides. The colors are incredible, it uses light blue and then slightly darker blue and then a purple all together and it like matches Lady Bone Demon's aesthetic that she has in the show and also just matches the aesthetic of the set really really well. You get two of them here and while the way my light box reflects light off that on them doesn't make them look amazing because you could like get little bits of like yellow reflecting off and everything, just having this in person in my house, this looks incredible. I absolutely love these two flags, I do not think they could have done, been done any better, they look absolutely awesome. They're held up by these like large spike structures, and you may have seen around the back there's two more of these trans blue chains. This area in the center right here seems a little awkward and empty, that's because there's a tombstone that goes in here and it doesn't look great without it, but when it goes in it actually looks really really nice. And then you can see there's some skeletal parts down here, so this becomes the actual rib cage of the thing, like it, you can see there's a bit of rib cage aesthetic coming up the back of the tail, but this is where the proper rib, rib cage like comes up to the top of the chest. But yeah, you can see these parts can be hinged down like this, but with But yeah, you can see th these parts by default are hinged down like this. But when you hinge them up, you can see it creates a proper rib cage for the back. You can also see there's two more skeletal bits up here that rotate up, but their own ball joints can be moved around however you want. And if you can tell, all those slightly green looking pieces are also glow in the dark. So if I shut the lights off again, you can see how those glow. This is definitely the most glow in the dark pieces in any part of this build is in the rib cage right here. But these look incredible. This looks so, so cool. I absolutely love how this mech looks, man. Next, we move on to the little tombstone. This is Lady Bone Demon's tombstone. And this is what goes in the center of that ribcage area, which I'll show you uh, how that fits in when we combine the mech together. But yeah, this is quite simple. It's just very rectangular. It's got a door that hinges open out the front. You can see there's spikes coming off. There's two Nexonite shields, one red and one purple. They have a design on it of uh, Lady Bone Demon's like logo. And if you hinge that down, you can see inside of the tombstone. And then you can see lots of like little bones and chains. And there's a little symbol right there. There's some spider webs in the bag. Very, very cool looking. I think that's a super cool sticker. And of course, Lady Bone Demon herself fits in perfectly there. So if you want to put her in there, you can. And you can close her right back up. Only two glow in the dark pieces on this one, just these two like uh, bone pieces on the sides. The next little side build is this little shrine right here. You can see there's this giant skull at the top right here, and then there's t uh, lots of bones all over. You have traditional like Lego skeleton torsos down here. You have these larger bone pieces that were introduced with Ninjago in 2011. These uh, skeleton arms that were also introduced from Ninjago in 2011. And then you have these horn bones coming out the top and some more curved ones behind them. Looking at the build from the other side, you can see there's a stickered piece right here of Lady Bone Demon's emblem. And that exists at the front as well, underneath the giant skull. Not much else to say about this build, you can see there's a little bit of room to post figures if you want, there's a little bit of like texture, you can see there they use some like flat rounded tiles right here and right here just to create some more dimension to this build. It's not super substantial, but I actually think it looks quite good and I'm quite a fan of it. And interestingly, this is the only villain build on the side that doesn't completely become a part of the bone mech, only this head does, so you can remove this right here. And there's how the shrine looks without it. And as you can see, while it's meant to be attached to this side, the two sides are nearly identical, so you can also attach it to this side if you prefer. You just wouldn't have the bones and the torsos on this side. And of course, more glow-in-the-dark parts on this one. Including on that head I had removed. And there's a look at them from the back. Next are these two bone spiders right here. You get two of them in the set, but they're exactly identical, so I'm only going to take a look at one of them because if you've seen one, you know what the other one is. But just keep in mind, you do get two of them in the set. But these guys are very, very fun. I absolutely love these little dudes. You can see they use those like larger bone horn pieces right here for their back legs, and then these larger tooth pieces for their front legs. Only six legs, so I guess not technically a spider, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be spiders. They have a stickered piece for their eyes on the front, which is very similar to the scorpion's eyes, but it's not exactly the same. This one is less detailed, has less eyes, less like pincers out the front. So I believe they're supposed to be like lesser forms of the like entire scorpion being. All of their legs are on ball joints too, so you can impose them in different ways if you want. And the front legs are actually on little hinges as well. My favorite part of these guys though is this little pot that's on top of them. It looks like they're making a little stew from skeletal parts, so as you can see there's a skull right here, two feet, and then there's a bone inside. And then out the back there's this giant Technic pin. This doesn't look great at all, but this is to connect this guy to the larger mech. 
I'm sure you could remove this if you want the spiders to work on their own quite easily, but yeah, this has to be here so it can combine with the overall mech when you put it all together. And of course, more glow-in-the-dark parts on this guy, only this ring around the top is glow-in-the-dark, as well as the bone in the stew. Just this one bone piece right here that was in the stew is glow-in-the-dark. And then finally, for the standalone parts of the bone mech, we have this little spider guy right here. Smaller than the two we just looked at, but he's got a slightly more detailed stickered face. He's got this little, like, uh, body out the back right here, which can be rotated up or down. Six legs, it's got two mechanical ones out the front, and it looks to be four skeletal ones out the back. And as always, these can be rotated to get him in a few different poses. There's how he looks in the back, not much going on with this guy. He's cute, he matches the rest of them well, but on his own, he's nothing all too special. And just two glow-in-the-dark parts on him, these two up here. And there's how those look in the darkness. And then the only two other parts of the mech are these two swords right here, but they don't really stand on their own. They kind of need to be with the mech. So now I think it's time to put the mech all together. So we start with the scorpion, who's the base of the mech. You actually remove these two arms right here. One. Two. These legs that are on ball joints are supposed to be flipped upside down. This thing at the top should be rotated 180 degrees. And then these mini ball joints should lock in right here. The actual stinger bit can curve out the front. Then this torso bit actually has a ball joint socket in the bottom, so you connect that to the ball joint right here. Place the miniature spider on these studs right here. Curve his legs around the mech. Place the tombstone on that minifigure stand. Close up the rib cage. Turn these two spikes upside down. Remove the head from the shrine. Reattach it to this neck right here. Take the arms that are removed from the scorpion and attach them into these sockets right here. Obviously you do this on both sides. Then take the larger spiders and flip all of their legs upside down. And then you can attach them to these technicals right here. They serve as sort of shoulder pads for the mech. And then finally, one last step, you can place these swords in the hands of the mech. And as I mentioned, all you have left over is the little shrine without the skull on it. I absolutely love how this all comes together. Each of the little individual parts are good on their own, but the way they all combine is just so cool. The final version does not look like it's made out of a bunch of little parts. It looks like one solid build. But I think it's just such a fun play feature that you can choose to transform into the huge mech or the little individual parts. I just know this is something I would have loved when I was a kid, and it's something I still love today. It's so, so cool, and I feel like it's something that lends itself to LEGO really easily, but LEGO themselves just don't do enough. And I absolutely love just seeing that here. I'm not going to take you through, like, each, like, posable part of this, because everything I showed you that was posable earlier is still posable. These arms now can move up and down, obviously, because the, uh, it's no longer on the ground, like with the scorpion. And the only new thing, I think, is these little, like, rock pieces are around the hips of the thing these can drape over the like scorpion stinger there's how the mech looks from the back and of course you can have lady bone demon pilot the mech so there's actually a stud right here right on top of the tombstone so you can just attach her to it right there close the neck and headpiece over top of her and there you go there is the mech with everything in place and i'm sure many of you are wondering how does it look when the lights turn off well there you go that is awesome. This is so, so cool. I had this in my bedroom. That's where I built it for a few nights before filming this review. And, and every night when I turned the lights off to go to bed and I just saw how this thing glowed, it just looked so cool. I love the abundance of the uh, glow-in-the-dark parts. I feel like glow-in-the-dark fits Lady Bone Demon really well with the nature of her powers in the show. This is just so incredible, and just seeing this all together, it looks amazing. Like, I am so impressed by this set, both the glow-in-the-dark feature and the transformation feature and just the overall aesthetic. There is so much to love here. This is an incredible set. By far, one of my top sets of the year. This is incredible. Just like I said in the intro, right? It's a great display piece. It's a great play piece. There's just so much here, and it's an amazing value, too. It's unique. I There's there's so much to love about this set. I can't see anything wrong with it, honestly. It's just very, 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 very good. But that's just the villain build of this set. Now let's go on to the two hero builds. The first is this little mech for Monkey Kid with this really, really big staff. And if you guys are familiar with the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes theme, this is essentially one of the little $10 mech sets from LEGO Marvel. And I do think that's a bit strange that they just use that exact same build design in Monkey Kid rather than Marvel because we've never seen it used outside of Marvel. But that's certainly not a complaint because I think this works really well as a just general mech design and I think it's really cool and I like getting it for a non-Marvel character. You can see it comes with this huge staff for Monkey Kid in the show. Monkey Kid's staff can expand and shorten. And I guess this is just a way for them to give us a slightly larger version of the staff. There's also a slightly smaller version of this but a larger version than the traditional staff that also is included in this set. But we'll take a look at that when we take a look at the minifigures. But yeah, I just wanted to point out the staff now because I'm going to remove it so I can show you guys the mech a little bit better because this thing definitely like uh, creates a lot of weight in this build. But you can see it's just connected 
connect with a detective pin right there and very easy to remove. So here's a look at the mech on its own and it has the same issues a lot of the Marvel mechs have where it's a pretty fun toy. It has a lot of posability for something so small but it struggles a lot in terms of stability like if you try to get this in any specific pose it's like it's very quick to fall over especially if you have the staff of the hand because this does weigh a lot in comparison to the mech. So if you intend to like play with this you really have to have a hand on it at all times or have it like posed on top of studs. But that aside there is a lot of posability in it right the legs can move the knees can move and then also the individual feet can move and rotate. Same thing with the arms. The arms themselves can move, but then there's also an elbow joint and then there's a little individual hand joint. And then both of the hands have three fingers and a thumb and these can each be posed individually. So if you wanted to like grip the staff, you can have all the fingers in, or if you want to be given like a high five, you can have all the fingers out. And that's how I had it earlier with the staff in his hand, I just had the fingers curled around it. And while it's only actually held in one hand, you can make it look like it's being held in two. This compartment right here out the front can actually open up. And that's where you can place Monkey Kid inside. And then you can close it back up around him and there's how he looks like actually in the mech. You can see there's this little stickered screen piece in front of him. It just has some numbers, looks like maybe a little heart rate monitor. And then around the back of the mech they use some mini ball joints to create like a little bit of a monkey tail which I actually think is pretty cute. It just ends on a ball joint and I wish there was a little bit of a better end to the tail but I think it's pretty cool. There's also some seemingly random like this is a Technic pin and this is just like a bar piece right here. I'm not sure why those are there. They're not that aesthetically pleasing and I don't believe they connect to anything in the set so if anybody knows what these are supposed to be let me know. And then finally you can see there's some stickered slope pieces on the backs of the hands. They are identical, just mirrored. And yeah, I think that's about it for the main bits of the Monkey Kid mech. The other build is this little cloud flyer right here, which I can't really tell, like, I'm not sure if it's for May because these wing attachments can be removed and attached to May, and obviously these are May's colors, but I'm not sure how May the minifigure herself would attach to it with these on. Like, I suppose you could have her on these two studs back here, but yeah, I don't know, this doesn't really do it for me. At least as a May vehicle, but as I said, these two parts can be removed. I'll show you how they attach to May when we look at the minifigures. But with those removed, it becomes a little platform for the Monkey Kid mech, and I think it actually works really well as that. It's just a little cloud platform like Monkey Kid has for himself and some other sets, but having it for this larger mech is actually quite cool, and I like that a lot. Also, some interesting parts on the bottom, you could see the there is the blue power blast, like large splat piece on the bottom here. I haven't seen this come outside of superhero sets before, so it's pretty cool to get that here. Personally, this is my first time getting it, so that's actually really exciting for me. But yeah, that just serves as a piece to hold the cloud platform up when it's on the ground. But I think that's finally it for the build, so now let's move on to the minifigures. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, we have MK and we have May. And all the figures in the set are exclusive to some extent. May is definitely the least exclusive of them with that wing attachment I just showed you being the only exclusive part about her. The rest of her is identical to the Wave 2 version of May that we saw earlier in 2021. So what you're looking at right now is just the Wave 2 May. There's nothing special about this figure at the moment. But she's, as always, a very, very good figure. I think the May figures are some of the best in the Monkey Kid line. Something interesting is her weapon build here. Usually it's said she either comes with her gun or her sword, but this one is actually a combination of the gun and the sword. So this is it just like as a gun right now, but if you just remove this right here, that's just May's dragon blade, right? Just the white dragon hilt with the green uh, blade coming out. That's exactly it. Like there's nothing to else to it. So I do think it's quite cool that she comes with both. MK himself is identical to his wave one design, except for some reason he has a new torso. I feel like the new torso is totally unnecessary, but hey, I'm not complaining. It's super cool whenever we get a new print. So this is just his classic jacket, but it's zipped up while all other previous versions of him have had it unzipped and he's back to using the headphones the wave 2 version used like a hoodie but yeah this version is back to using the headphones which honestly i prefer the hoodie but the headphones are still cool other than that though you can see it just has the same uh leg printing that he's had since the beginning a pretty standard face for him and the same like dual molded hair or headband piece to create the alternate version of may by the way it comes with this little backpack attachment right here so you just attach that to her neck then obviously reattach the head and helmet and then those wing pieces that I removed earlier from the cloud build can be attached to these little technicals in the back of May's backpack. And there you go, now you have May in this like winged flying form. And I actually think this looks really, really cool. I think this fits her well. It's a cool new variant where it's like, if you don't get this set, you still have the main like season two version of May. But the wings are just like an awesome new thing that you can ever do. May also does come with her hair piece in this set. So there's a lot of customizability with her. There's May with her accessories removed, so you can get a better look at that torso print. And there's Monkey Kid with the headphones removed, so you can also get a better look at his torso print. It actually looks really, really nice with the headphones removed. I much prefer it like this. Also, as always, Monkey Kid comes with a staff, which he comes with in every set. But as I mentioned earlier, you get three sizes of the staff in this set, because in the show, we can change to all different sorts of sizes. So this is just the standard normal size. You saw the very large size on the mech. But then there's also just like this bigger one that fits in a minifigure's hand, which also comes in this set. So if you want, you can have MK carrying that instead. And it's huge and oversized, but it 
it fits, like, it fits in perfectly, it matches, like, the animation that the staff has in the show. I think that's an awesome inclusion, I can't believe they haven't done that in a set before. I believe, like, the original Monkey Kid Mac had a very, very big version of the staff, but it's very cool to get a bigger version of the staff that the mean figure can actually hold, because it looks great, and it's oversized, and it's just so much fun. The way it's built too is very interesting, so obviously that's a lightsaber hill right here, but all of these pieces are actually the Harry Potter candle piece, all stacked on top of each other, which I think is excellent parts usage and it looks great. There's a look at MK's face front with the hair piece removed, and there's a look at the alternate faces of back torso prints. You can see MK has like a bit of like an animal print design up there, which is interesting, and then he's just got a symbol on his back as always. May, really really great back torso print, and there's her alternate face where she's winking and smiling. This is a great face print that fits May's expressions really well, but I'm a bit tired of seeing it in sets. Every set May has come in in 2021 other than the minifigure set at the LEGO store has come with this face, and I think it would be cool to get some more variants. Because MK is a unique face in like most of the sets he comes in, so the fact that she's stuck to the same face almost all the time is a little bit lame. But I think that's about going to do it for these two, so now let's move on to the villain figures. So here are the next three minifigures in the set. The box art for the set calls this character White Bone Demon, but obviously in the show her name is Lady Bone Demon, so... I'm not sure what's correct there, but I'm going to be calling her Lady Bone Demon because that's what I recognize her as from the show. And then the set also comes with two Bone Spirit minifigures. As of the time of me recording this, uh, this is part of Wave 4 of Monkey Kid, and this is the only set these guys come in. But as it seems like Lady Bone Demon is probably going to be the main villain of Season 3, I wouldn't be surprised if these characters are all re-released later on, but at the moment, they are all exclusive to this set. And all three of these figures are pretty incredible. Obviously, these two are identical, so I'm only going to be talking about one of them. But I absolutely love Lady Bone Demon herself, one of my favorite minifigures of this year already. I love the Aladdin elaborate hair piece. You can see it has room to hold a bone in the back. And then she's got a dull-sided face. This side of the face is like her calmer, friendlier look. I think it would have been cool if we got the version of her like in her human form that we saw all throughout season two. But seeing her in her full demon form is also very, very cool and that's like a friendlier face for her. And then you can see she's got this really elaborate like purple and black color scheme with like this very skeletal look. There's a little bit of like off-white used there which gives her such like an ominous look. Normally the off-white is a bad thing in Lego but I actually think it fits this character really, really well. And then she uses like the Ninjago Legacy armor piece right there in purple, which I'm not sure if we've gotten in that color before, but it's a really cool color for that piece. And then the bone spirits are a lot simpler. You can see they just have like the skeletal ribcage design with some metallic printing right there, her uh, Lady Bone Demon symbols surrounded by purple. And then they use the 2021 Overlord tail piece, which is pretty cool. Speaking of that piece, you actually also get a third of it in the set as well. So if you wanted to give Lady Bone Demon the spirit tail piece instead of her dress piece, you could. Personally, I think the dress looks far, far better, but I do appreciate that this is an option. Another really cool thing is the build is not the only part of the set that glows in the dark. You can see the Bone and Lady Bone Demon's hair as well as the arms and faces on the Bone Spirits all glow in the dark. The Bone Spirits especially look very, very cool. Turn the lights back on, now we can take a look at the accessories for these minifigures. So you can see both of the Bone Spirits come with these interesting like spear, like spiked spear weapons. I think these are really creative, they use a Technic piece right here that goes up to the tip of the spear. I actually really, really love this build, I would love to see it used in like Ninjago and whatnot. It's creative, I love seeing like, because weapons obviously have to be so small, I love seeing like unique techniques used for weapon builds. And then Lady Bone Demon herself comes with two smaller swords or knives or whatever you want to consider these. But yeah, all three of these figures are very, very cool. I absolutely love all of them. They all have like a great matching aesthetic. They fit together absolutely perfectly and they match the character from the show. I'm very, very happy with them. Here is Lady Bone Demon and one of the Bone Spirits with their accessories removed. I'm not going to take apart both of the Bone Spirits because, as I said, they're both identical, so this anything you see on this one is also on this one. But yeah, now you can get a better look at how intricate Lady Bone Demon's torso is. It's really incredible. I absolutely love this figure. And then you get a slightly better look at that face front. There's, like, her more evil face. And then turning these guys around, you get a better look at uh, Lady Bone Demon's alternate face, where you can see she has that smile like I showed you earlier. And then, like, really elaborate, like, bone armor on her back. You can see a little bit of purple coming off the top of the dress. It would have been cool if the back of the dress is printed because I know that we have gotten that in like Lego Harry Potter before, so that would have been really nice to see here, but it's not a huge deal that it isn't. And then the Bone Spirits back toaster print looks fairly basic, but it still looks quite good. So overall, would I recommend this set? If you couldn't tell, 100% yes, this is one of my favorite sets of this year. I'm not sure if it is my absolute favorite, but it really is up there. I'm not sure how long this is going to edit down to, but I've been recording this review for an hour 30 minutes, which is insane for a set of this size. Like, I reviewed $120 sets before, and it usually takes some time, but not this much time. There is so much here. I love all the different aspects of the Bone Mech, how they're all their own separate things, and how they all come together. The sheer amount of glow-in-the-dark parts on this set are awesome. I love how you get a really significant villain build, but also pretty significant hero builds right you have something for May and something for MK all the figures here are exclusive in some sense uh May's the only one that isn't really exclusive because she only has like an exclusive accessory which could be built from your own parts though you wouldn't have the stickered pieces but Lady Bone Demon the two Bone Spirits and Monkey Kid are all completely exclusive to the set and that is incredible again I'm not sure if they're going to stay that way but at least as of the time you're recording this they are 
And that combined with the great value for the set, the great build of the set, the playability of the set, the awesome glow-in-the-dark parts, I cannot believe all this is in one set. Especially coming from the Monkey Kid theme, because as I've said, the previous Monkey Kid sets have been really bad in terms of value. Not the worst we've ever seen from LEGO, but for a LEGO original theme, it could have been much, much better. But I feel like this is Monkey Kid to its truest potential. This is what I always wanted Monkey Kid to be. And I'm so glad it finally is, because yeah, I feel happy to wholeheartedly recommend this set. It's 100% worth the money, it is an excellent set, and I highly recommend if you can afford it, and if you're a fan of LEGO Monkey Kid, you pick it up, because this is a really, really great one. But those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like and subscribe if you're new. I do LEGO videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. And as I mentioned at the beginning, let me know in the comments which set you want to see reviewed next. Do you want to see Pigsy's Noodle Tank, or do you want to see Sandy's Power Loader Mac? Whichever set is more popular in the comments is the review I will upload tomorrow. But yeah, I think that's about going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!